What's good? Mm-hmm. What's good, man? What's good, Cool B? Yo, what's up, Mr. Mertz? How's it going, man? Man, all is well, man. All is well, man. You know, just over here, ATL. You know, chilling. Cloudy day, no rain. You know, you never know what the weather out here, man. So, um, all the people just tuning in, I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. And this is Sin Radio Cast, episode number three, The Freshman Guide to Travel. Definitely. Yeah. So, man, um, first, man, I, I, I know I'm looking at your background, man, and uh, just a little, you, you know, all the listeners and all the people tuning in, I'm sure they're going to notice that your background's a little different. So, uh, just tell them, tell them the reason why. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I'm somewhere in Africa right now. <laughs> and, um, that's my, my uh, picture of my elephant, but I couldn't bring the elephant inside. Mm. But the elephant is outside. But no, um, the backdrop, my backdrop is kind of crazy right now. Um, I'm going to try to, for each episode, I'm going to try to switch up the backdrop just a little bit. I'm going to try to. We'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, this backdrop is kind of crazy right now. So, so you're in Africa? Yeah, I'm in Africa. <laughs> you're a funny guy. But... Uh... Yeah, man. So, um, yeah. So, man, you know, third episode, uh, first two episodes, if you haven't checked it out, um, check out our two previous episodes. We spoke on the uh, R. Kelly situation. And um, mm-hmm. first episode we did was the uh, 2019 um, wrap-up show. Well, right. sorry, 18 wrap-up show. Yeah, 2018 wrap-up. Mm-hmm. And uh, check those out. Make sure y'all subscribe, hit that notification bell, and like the video. And um, this episode right here is going to be, uh, it's going to have a lot of information on it. So I hope you guys enjoy. And uh, let's get into it, man. And, and get into this. Let's, first of all, let's get into the title. Okay. Guide to Travel. And the reason why we call it the Freshman Guide to Travel is because this, this episode right here is going to be for anybody that has never traveled uh, abroad. Uh, folks have never been on the airplane, people that have never been on a flight, never got a passport, mm-hmm. know nothing about traveling, and we'll really want to know how to travel, uh, want to overcome that fear. Maybe you have a fear of traveling, and you just can't figure out ways to overcome that fear. Um, this episode is for you, just bring you a little more clarity, and before we start the episode and really go into the meat and potatoes of this episode, I kind of just want to go over something that I noticed in our communities, who be. All right, let's hear it. Well, I notice a lot of my brothers and sisters in, the, in, 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 in our communities don't really travel. Uh, very few of you are traveling. Um, you have access to the United States passport, which uh, grants you access to a lot of different countries without you having to go through the process of getting a visa. Uh, right. And... I just find that it's, uh, I'm not going to say disturbing, but it's kind of, you know, it's kind of depressing to me that a lot of us are not really going out there to see things and see what other cultures have to offer and just, just, you know, going abroad just to, just to get away, you know, just to get away from the everyday um, lifestyle that we're accustomed to. Right. Um, I just like to say that a lot of folks uh, ask me, I'm sure they ask you if you're in the military because some strange reason, <laughs> you know, a lot of people feel that black people only travel when the military sends them somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. I'm stop uh, changing the narrative. So, you know. I think, um, I think it's very important to travel because it opens you up to different things outside of what you're accustomed to or what your norm is. And um, once you can see how another culture lives and how they, you know, just pretty much how they do things in another, even if it's in another state, you know, or even if it's in um, on another country as well, too, it's always good that you can kind of just, just to see how other people are living. And even, even people of your own race, you know, because there are Black people all around the world, you know, that are uh, maybe going through some of the same things you're going through, but just in another destination. But, um, you know, but it's just, it's not just, you know, a black or white thing. It's just a traveling thing and opening up your mind. You know, most people who don't travel, 
their their thinking is kind of limited to a degree and you know and people can kind of give them misinformation but sometimes it's always good to kind of travel on your own just to see how other people are living right yeah. you know whether it's russia whether it's china you know whether it's london wherever because you know as they say um people are people we're all human but you know it's always good to just to kind of learn from other people's culture and you know just to see how other people do things the same or even different yeah that that's definitely true and another thing man it's just like you know traveling to me uh gives you an opportunity to witness things from a perspective that is a lot different from your norm right. uh, other countries things are done a lot differently in other countries and you know people that travel will be very surprised for the first time to to see how other nations do things like we think that everyone does the same things that we do over here but it's quite the contrary uh different countries have different customs right. have food um have different holidays right like, for example uh like in ethiopia a lot of people don't know ethiopians celebrate christmas i believe on january 7th mm, uh, okay wow i didn't know, that. know that you know um so you would never know that unless you knew someone from Ethiopia or mm -hmm. you actually went to Ethiopia and someone told you. Right. Or if you researched it. But, you know, that's the importance of traveling to me. It just gives a different perspective. It adds another dimension to you. And I noticed that a lot of my brothers and sisters, like I said before, we're not really taking advantage of the, the benefits that are granted to you as a United States citizen. Um, right. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like where I want to start this show, really, to get into things, is I really want to get into the whole um, passport, getting the passport. And it's the first right. one got to travel, so we're assuming that you don't have a passport. Mm. And if you think you're going to get into a, any a country now without a passport, good luck. Because I don't even think they accept the birth certificates anymore. I know once upon a time, mm. certain places like Canada, Mexico, they used to actually accept your passport, I'm um, sorry, your birth certificate, but now they changed a lot of the rules up and now you will have to have a passport or like right. a passport. So let's get into that, man. Let's let's start off with the passport. It's the freshman guide to travel for all the people just tuning in. We are definitely going to be teaching you uh, some, um, some simple tips, simple tricks to uh, get, making your first trip abroad, I guess you can say, getting your right. first trip another city if you're on the east coast uh making a trip to the west coast and no you don't need a passport to do that but i'm going to tell you like this it it really behooves you to actually have a passport right okay, we're going to go into that right now so if you don't have a passport i'm going to tell you like this you're going to need one so we're going to get right to it easiest way to get a passport in my personal opinion mm -hmm. is uh, going down to your local post office or calling them up and asking them if they actually take passport pictures. Uh, there are certain branches uh, within your region that are actually able to not only process your application, but they also take passport pictures for you, which yep. kind of skips a step. Uh, I would tell you call ahead of time, find out if that post office does things by appointment. A lot of times they do walk-ins, and I believe Saturdays they typically uh, have appointments only. Uh, I'll just tell you to go check with your post office, and I'll tell you like this: you're going to definitely going to need. I'm going to tell you what you're going to what you're going to need. You're going to need your ID. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. You might need your birth certificate now. Uh, they changed up a lot of rules. Right. And with the new real ID thing that's going into effect, uh, it's they're making it real hard for people without yeah. the proper paperwork to actually get a passport, okay? So please be mindful of that. So have those things on tap when you do go to the post office. Uh, the fee typically is about $110 for the first time. If it's your first time and you never had a passport, it'll be $110 plus a $35 execution fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a one-time fee. And that'll bring your total up to $145. 110 plus the, um, $35, and then you, you can throw in another $15 to $20 uh, right. for the passport picture. And like I said, a lot of the post offices now, they're actually 
uh, doing it right there on the spot. Then you fill out the application, you take the passport picture, you pay them right there, and you should have that passport, uh, i say in about 10 days, or 10 days typically. D depending. Sometimes it'll, sometimes it'll take, the most it should take is about two weeks. But um, I think um, if you put down that you are flying out at a certain date, they might try to um, get that sped up to you. Like yeah, expedite it quickly. Yeah. Expedite service. Yeah, they're going to expedite it to you a little bit sooner. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, but um, but the proof of identification you need, you need a government issued photo ID card, and you need your birth certificate, because if it's not, if it's just a regular ID card with your name on it, that's not going to fly. So you definitely need a government issued ID card, and you need your birth certificate or um, a nationalization certificate to help to get your uh, passport. Facts, facts, mm -hmm. and also. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but you can also get something called a passport card. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty much like a passport. And the only difference is, and I, I recommend you get the book, and I'm, I'm going to just say this. I know the passport card is cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, the passport card, typically for an adult, will be $30 plus the $35 execution fee. Uh, for children, it'll be about $15 plus the $35 execution fee. So you do the math there. Um, for the adults, you're looking at about $65. And for a child, for the uh, first time, it will be about fifty dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. but the reason why I'm going to stress you getting the passport book is the reason that they put stamps in your book, and you know it's something about seeing stamps on my passport that that just does it for me. It just it just brings back memories. It, it's like right. a, it's like a snapshot in time. It's like a stamp of approval. So I would I would pay a little bit more money for the passport book, but if you're on a budget and you're a little tight or whatever. And, you know, get your get your passport card. But the bottom line is, you're gonna need these um, two items, right? If they are serious about traveling abroad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, before you know, a lot of people I know out there probably questioning: Are there any things that can prevent you from getting your passport? Right. Mm -hmm. And I like to say uh, there are definitely things that can um, hinder you from getting a passport. One thing I know about is um, child support rares. Uh, yes. You know, if you're not paying child support, they're not going to give you a passport and tell you that right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's definitely something you want to uh, consider um, before you even go out there paying all this money to get denied. Right. Uh, anything else, school? Yeah. To touch on what you said, um, if you are, if you have a criminal arrest warrant. And that's outstanding or if you're on probation and if, and if you're on parole, those might be a few things that might hinder you in getting a passport. But also if you get a passport, you know, um, there are certain places that might not let you into the country, even with a passport. Like I know um, Canada is strict on that. So it's always important, it's always important to, um, before you travel, um, speak to whatever country that you're going to's consulate, and right. then they can uh, they'll probably give you like a little interview just to see why you're going there, whatever, and they'll give you some paperwork with the stamp of approval. So once you have that, you can't be denied with that going into the country with your passport. So those are some things that you can um, definitely do to kind yeah. of ensure you that you're going to make it into that country of your destination. So. Yeah, definitely Canada. Canada is a perfect example. Uh, a lot of people in Canada have been denied for tickets in states, like yep. six tickets. So um, you, you want to be mindful of that. You, you know, Canada has a real close relationship with the United States. And, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, they're a little more critical than a lot of other countries. Um, so moving along, man, we just, mm -hmm. we just went over a couple things that can um, prevent you from getting passport. There's a few other things. But I would always say, well, like with anything else, just do your due diligence, man. Just do your yeah. due diligence and cross your T's and dot your I's. Don't leave anything to chance. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, once we get your passport, everything's come together, everything's come in the mail, you got mm -hmm. your nice little passport or whatever, you know, you've already taken the first step in, in you know, traveling abroad and, and your destiny to, to, to see new places. So, 
what's next? Obviously, you want to decide where you want to go. Um, right. Mm -hmm. As for, you know, you think about places to go. Well, how do we decide where you want to go first? Well, well yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, okay. For me, I think um, just word of mouth is like one of the best things that you can do. Um, you can ask some friends, you can ask some family members if they know any cool spots or, or, um, or been to any cool places that they can recommend for a trip. That's always a good thing. Um, that, that and um, also, um, you know, television is all, always a good thing as well, too. You know, when you're watching some of these travel channels and stuff like that, they're always going to these exotic places and, and things that you want to, they, they, Pretty much they're advertising these places for you to come and check it out. So they're going to put um, their best foot forward to kind of like show you these places. And, and then usually they'll put a lot of information on the screen as to um, where you can find out about these places and, you know, what travel agents that you can speak to about these places. So it's just a way of drawing you into to traveling. What about yeah, yourself, Moose? Travel, travel agent. Uh, you just touched on that travel mm -hmm. for anyone that's you know looking to travel abroad for the first time. Mm -hmm. a travel can be very, very beneficial. Um, the reason why I typically rep um, recommend a travel agent for someone that's traveling somewhere for the first time is that travel agents typically have connections um, in the region to people that are in that region that you you intend on visiting, and they can put you in contact with these people. They can have these people pick you up from the airport. They can have these people take yep. you to places that you might not be familiar with. Uh, they're from the area, they're local. So, you know, that'll be uh, something very beneficial is to have a travel agent. Right. Another thing you could do is you could simply go on YouTube. Yeah. Um, YouTube has tons of videos on destinations, yeah. top 10 destinations for Americans, uh, top de 10 uh, destinations for, um, for vacation and in the summer. It doesn't matter. YouTube is very versatile. Mm -hmm. And I should, I think people need to use YouTube a lot more to their, their advantage because there are a lot of cool tips, um, places, even places to avoid. Um, you don't want to just travel anywhere. There's certain places that right. uh, things are not stable. There, there might be some unrest. Right. And places you definitely don't want to visit for the first time. You don't want to traumatize yourself. Not you know, at all. Or, or, or get hurt. <laughs> you know? Or worse off, never come back. Yeah, that too. Okay. And that's why I don't like movies. Like, I think a lot of reasons why a lot of our people don't travel is like movies. Like, yeah. This movie, what's that movie called, man? That uh, when the girl went over to Europe. Um, you, you're talking about Hostel? Hostel, yeah. Oh, man. I think it's called Hostel, yeah. See, yeah. movies like that. Um, can definitely deter you from going to other places, but I'm, mm. I'm telling folks right now, th that's just a movie. Um, mm. Things can happen anywhere, but typically, yeah, you know, for sure, nations and stuff like that. Um, if you follow certain rules and strict um, criteria, trust mm. me, you won't be caught up in nothing, nothing like that. Okay, right. I just want to make that. Um, make that very clear, man. So, you know, I know a lot of people, like I speak to certain people and I was talking to this young guy one time and, and we were talking about flying abroad and he was like, I don't, I don't want to fly abroad because he heard about the Malaysian um, airline that disappeared allegedly. Right. Over, um, I forget the country, it was in Malaysia or like off the, I guess off the coast of mm -hmm. Malaysia. And he was like so nervous about that. And I just remember telling the young brother, like, listen, man, did you see a t plane takeoff? Did you know anybody on the plane? Right. <laughs> he said, and I said, well, how do you know a plane never disappeared? So what they're yeah. telling you, but hey. Pretty but, much. You know, another thing too, I think, um, you know, we, we live in the States. So I know for myself and I know as well as for you, you know, when you're meeting certain people, we've met quite a few people just living in, in New York from different countries. And, and right. um, so just by speaking to them, you know, you, you kind of hear their stories and stuff like that. And I think sometimes when you speak to certain people, 
and certain people hear someone with an accent, they're like, okay, well, why are you here? Is your country poor? Is it this? Is it that? So you have more questions, but some of the questions that you, not me or you, but certain questions that people would ask is like, well, you're here. So, so sometimes people automatically think that their country is like a poor country or whatever the case may be. But you go to some of these countries, and some of these countries look like they have palaces all over the place. You know, like you go to um, you go to uh, Central America or, or, or South America, like you go to uh, like Argentina or something like that. These places are beautiful, man. Or you go to um, I was speaking to somebody not too long ago about Mexico City. And I didn't realize that, I know Mexico City, I heard, I heard it was like a very nice place, but I didn't know that Mexico City was like three times or almost four times the size of Los Angeles. I didn't know that. Wow. And, and LA is a huge place as it is. So could, I could imagine being in Mexico City and, and dealing with that traffic. I heard the traffic out in um, Mexico City is is worse than LA's traffic. I'm like, man, I could believe it. I could believe it, man. These places, some of these places, me, man, the pictures don't do them justice, man. No, not at all. Man, pictures, certain things, man. Pictures can't give you smells. You know, <laughs> pictures can't give you a breeze. You know, it's right. that's beautiful places out there. And for all the people tuning in, man, this is Sim Radio Cast. I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. Yeah, this is a radio cast, man. And we over here doing our third episode of Freshman Guide to Travel, man. That's right. I take a lot of value out of this, man. And, and really um, overcome your fear of traveling, overcome your fear of flying, and go out there into the world and see what the world has to offer you, man. Because trust me, everything's not here in America, man. There's places abroad that, right. that travel here. So definitely stressing that. So now we talked about the passport cool b we right. uh, talked about things that could prevent you from getting the passport yeah and talked about how to decide where to go now, right mm -hmm. none of this stuff is going to go down without you having something first yes none of this happen none of this happen without the you money man. the money the money shout out to cardi okay mm. shout out to money man <laughs> You gotta have the money. You ain't going so, nowhere. So let me ask you a question. So what are some ways of saving money if you want to take a trip? Man, we got a lot of ways, man. Um, mm -hmm. Being a person that travels myself, man, I've come up with a, a few uh, cool ways to really put away funds in mm -hmm. such a way where it doesn't really affect you, it doesn't affect your bills, um, and it'll accumulate over a period of time. Now, Okay. Me, what I do is, in order to save money without really hindering uh, myself as far as bills are concerned, um, I like to do this. And this is something I strongly recommend everyone that is listening, anyone who has never been, never been abroad, anyone that has problems saving money, mm -hmm. trust me, this will work. And the reason why it'll work is because it's a passive way of saving. Okay. I'll tell you what you're gonna do. Trust me when I tell you this. It works. I've done it hundreds of times. Okay, and mm -hmm. I always accumulate the funds that I need for my trip. Now, what I recommend that you do, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna need at least two bank accounts for this. So if you yeah. don't have a bank account, if you're one of those people that don't believe in banks, trust me, this is not gonna work for you. Right. So as you run out there, open up. Uh, uh, some type of savings account. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to have a check-in, but I recommend check-ins because check-ins are good for transactions. Right. For purposes, purposes such as purchasing online tickets. So I'll say rather, you much rather have a check-in account than a right. savings account. You definitely do want a savings account to save your money, obviously. But for transactional purposes, you're going to definitely need a check-ins account. So I'll tell you, open an account. I, I prefer credit unions, and I'm going to tell you why. Credit okay. unions view you more like a member. Credit unions typically have uh, great benefits to them. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more than commercial banks. I, I just find credit unions just do things in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that definitely benefits the members. 
Um, and they're, 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 they're just like banks. They're, they're pretty much a bank, but you're more like a member. Um, and credit unions, um, like I said, they offer all types of benefits. They got a whole bunch of them. They got Teachers Federal Credit Union. They right. got Better Credit Union. So I would say whatever area you're in, see if you can get into a great credit union and right. open up two different accounts. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's not a credit union, you can still use a bank. So whether you get a credit union or you get a, a regular bank, commercial bank, um, it can still work for you. Now, here's what I do. Okay. What I do is when I'm working, and let's say I'm, I'm getting a, a paycheck at the end of the week, every two weeks, every week, what I do is I have a percentage of my check go to my other bank. So what's going to happen is, let's say I get paid $600 a week, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. No thing about this is you can actually set a dollar, a dollar value or you can just set a percentage. So let's say um, I want to do a dollar value. Let's say out of my $600, I want to save $50. Right. Mm -hmm. You set up your direct deposit where the check comes in to your direct deposit, but it automatically takes the $50 and direct deposits to your other account. Now, this other account is the one you're going to be using for savings. Right. You do want to touch this account. You don't want it to be a, a bank that is accessible. You don't want it to be like a Wells Fargo. You don't want it to be, and I don't have nothing against Wells Fargo or Chase, but these banks are pretty much everywhere. So when you see a bank everywhere, it gives you more access. So I prefer mm -hmm. to go to smaller banks, uh, credit unions even, to, to set up a savings account because these are um, establishments that are, they have great benefits, but they're not as abundant as some of the commercial banks. And like I said, you can put a percentage. I always recommend anywhere from 10, 12 to 15% coming right. out of the check and going to your other account automatically. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen is that you're going to be doing this passively. You don't have to do this actively because sometimes when you have money in your hands, you go out and do something manually, you'll start to come up and create the reasons why you want to spend the money. So we want to avoid all that. We want to make this a subconscious, passive way of saving money. And this works, trust me, folks, this works. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's where we can um, save our money. Cool B, you have any suggestions as well? Well, if you don't want to do the, the whole bank route, you know, and one of the ways that I've done, um, done this before, just to save money, pull out whenever you get paid a week, $100 to $150 a week, and then stash it, put it away. Don't even think about it. Cash in hand, just put it away. It adds up real quick. And also, um, change. If you don't like to uh, use your change, just put it in a jar. And every time you get change, don't spend it. Put it in a jar, and it adds up. I remember one time a while ago, um, I was going, I think we were going to London one time. And, right. um, you know, I was just kind of saving money every week. But then I was saving a bunch of change. And um, I just took it to the bank, cashed it in. It was about like, almost, what, $400 with the change that I had. That was extra on top of what I was um, saving. So that's definitely um, two ways to do it. Definitely. Effective ways. Definitely effective. Because I've done it, and it's a proven method, and it works. So. I've yeah. done it too, man. We did it when we was younger. First time we ever went to Canada, me and my family. Uh -huh. was younger, but we, we had like a big uh, Budweiser bottle. It was like a big bottle. We just put pennies in there, man. We, we literally paid for all the tolls and everything just off that one pack. Oh, that's good man so we you know we were able to fund the whole trip off of pennies so mm -hmm. pennies add up bro <laughs> so all that's people good. out there you know you had extra change you get change you know you go to the supermarket you go to the deli go to the gas station man just continue just put that change away just just dump it dump it dump it right find a job find a piggy bank wherever man all this stuff adds up oh yeah and i give you guys another tip um, in the Caribbean, this is pretty popular. I'm not really too sure about folks in America, but it's something called a susu. Yeah, I'm familiar and, with that. Yeah, it's called a susu hand, and that's pretty much when you pool um, a group of individuals pooling money. And mm. what happens is that money that you're pooling in moves from one person one month to the next person the next month. And yeah. each person gets an opportunity to get that lump sum while they're continuously paying it. 
Okay, it's kind mm -hmm. of hard to explain, but uh, just look up what a susu hand is. It's it's pretty dope. You can um you can put in anywhere from twenty five dollars a week to fifty dollars a week. Right. And like a susu hand amount is a thousand dollars per person. At some point during this this time period, it could be a period of six months. Let's say six people. It'll be yeah. six months. You could say one month of paying in. I might get the susu hand. Or Cool B can get the Susu hand. It moves around. Right. Everybody's paying in, but each person gets an opportunity to spend that money at some point. Everybody gets their. Everybody their gets money. gets a large payout out of that pot. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Everybody's putting in the pot, so that's a great way to uh, save up some money, um, so you can travel abroad. Sure. Now, um, now that we we got the money situation situated, mm -hmm. uh, we now want to. Uh, find avenues that we can actually book our flight, book our hotel stays, right. and things of that nature. This is the Freshman Guide to Travel, folks. We're, we're, we're trying to teach you guys how to go about taking your first trip abroad or your first trip into another city within the United States, okay? And these tips, for the most part, work for both, whether you're, you're, you're traveling abroad or you're traveling um, mm -hmm. national in the country, okay? And also, I would like to say, most people think that traveling somewhere, it's a major expense. You might spend some money, but you can find deals and stuff and travel on a budget. You don't need $2,000 or whatever to go to another state. You don't even need $2,000 to go to another country. Country. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. But the, but the thing is, um, certain places that you would go to, you know, um, the most amount of money you will spend is on a ticket. But when you get over there, certain things, right. like food and stuff may be cheap. That's a, that's, this, a, that's a very good point. Right. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, that, that is true with a lot of places, especially in mm -hmm. Asia. Um, you're going to notice that the airline tickets are very high, but when you look at the cost of living to be there, right. places like Bangkok, yeah, they, it costs a fortune to fly there, but when right. you get there, your conversion rate is it is really in your benefit. So right. when you're there, the cost of being there is very low compared right. to being in some of the other states or places like such as New York, which is a very expensive mm. city to live in. When you compare some of the things you are afforded, right. places like um, like Bangkok, places in like Nepal and these places. No. In you'll be amazed man even like um I, I know some people that went to thailand and they were saying how you know everything is cheap you have like a big um platter of food and you're paying like 10 bucks for like a big on feast for like four or five people and you're paying 10 bucks for that and also um the hotel stay is cheap as well too is some places are like 20 something dollars a night it's crazy right. that's a fact man yeah but um, I'm glad you brought that up. That that's a very good point there, Cool B. For sure. So Thank let's you. go. Um, you know uh, where you want to go to 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 start finding your airline tickets. Uh, I'm gonna start with the airline tickets, and then we can move on to where you're gonna actually stay. Okay, let's do it. A couple of sites, man. I can throw out there off my head because I, I travel a lot. Mm -hmm. I would definitely put out there Expedia. Expedia mm -hmm. is all the travelocity. Mm -hmm. Cheap bites. Uh, we got us. There's a site called Momundo. Momundo. Yeah. Website. Familiar. App. Very, very good. Um, very good. Uh, cheap tickets for flights. And mm -hmm. a lot of these sites also have hotels that you can actually add in to your trip. Okay? Right. And mm -hmm. Discounts with hotels, so you can actually book a cheap flight, and you can also book a very cheap hotel. So yeah. I want y'all that in mind as well. A lot of these yeah. sites have all those things mixed into each other. And even some of the sites even have car rental options as well. So yes. mm -hmm. definitely check those out. Um, Sky, I don't know if I mentioned Skyscanner. Skyscanner is a yeah. very, very good. Um, I um, like Skyscanner. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why. Uh, you can go to Skyscanner. You can, let's say you look for a, a flight on Skyscanner one day. Mm -hmm. And the flight is $150. And let's mm -hmm. say the flight price went down right um, and it will send you a notification to let you know that the price of the flight just actually dipped so it'll give you like updates on 
the fluctuation of tickets. Because one thing you're going to learn about airline tickets is that they fluctuate. Like, it depends on the day that you're booking. I think they said Wednesday is probably the best day to get your cheapest ticket or the best day to rather rather fly out. Wednesday, Wednesdays are typically the best day and right. cheapest day to fly out from an airport. Okay? Yep. And sites like that will definitely help you out, man. You got any other um, sites off your head, Kubi? Um, I know um, we went over a lot of the major ones, but even if you go on some of these sites like uh, Travelocity or whatever, I know once you put in um, whatever your destination is for your ticket or whatever, there are other sites that'll pop up that do price comparisons for it. So even if it's one site that you're looking at, you can put into the, like the search browser and like 50 other sites will come up to try to see if you can get a cheaper ticket or work it out that way. So I know that's one of the tricks as well, too. That I, that's that I, nice little mm -hmm. trick, man. Nice mm -hmm. little. So with that said, we got, we got the sites. We gave you a couple of sites you can check out. And come mm -hmm. on, folks, go out there, do your due diligence. Oh, yeah. stuff, man. This site's popping up pretty much every day, man. So. Um, take what we have, but also compare. You might find something that we're not even aware of. There might be a site you don't know nothing about. And I also like to add, uh, who be, a lot mm -hmm. of these just mentioned also do cruises. So you don't oh, yeah. only have to go through a travel agent. A lot of uh, these sites actually have cruises. And cruises are something that I strongly recommend. Let's, let's oh, yeah. kind of go real quick. I like cruises because cruises give you so much at a discount. Um, for instance, like with a cruise, you don't really have to worry about food. A lot of the food and a lot of the things, activities that you want to get involved with. Oh, yeah. It provides for you. A lot of this stuff is on board, on the ship. Uh, you get to go to multiple destinations in one shot. So you could be on a five-day cruise and you can maybe hit – four or five islands and yep. you, you can you can do all these islands and, and it's it's a lot more cheaper than you fly into these islands individually it, it really adds up with the flights but the cruise really gives you a nice cool option uh, right check out these places and 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 do it at a very deep discount and like i said mm -hmm. cruises when you pay for a cruise you pretty much don't have to worry about food man food no not at all uh, on the cruise sorry they're feeding you from morning, early in the morning all the way up until midnight. And you can find cruises to destinations starting at like $400, $500 for a cruise per person. That's a, that's a fact. I mean, yeah. they, I've seen them start that, that cheap, you know, 250 per person. You yeah. know, that's for a cabin, you know. Yeah. And for all those people who are like kind of nervous about being on the water, man, these ships are humongous. If you, if you don't like seeing water, you can, you can get a cabin within the ship that's not by the window. So right. you don't see, you know, if you got motion sickness or whatever, you don't have to see anything. These ships are like cities. So cruises yeah. are definitely a great way for somebody that's a freshman to travel in to, to really take advantage of, man. Also, um, I want to add in, say, for example, that you're looking for a place to stay. What would be some places that um, you would look up that you could stay at that'll be like reasonable or um, or within uh, within someone's budget, the average person's budget? Well, that's that's not hard, man. Um, like we mentioned before, you can definitely check out the Expedia's, the Travelocities, right? And they typically have like a lot of deal with some of the major chain hotels or whatever, mm -hmm. but. If Somebody that's kind of on a tight budget, you don't really want to pay that kind of money for a hotel if you think right. the cost run you too much. Uh, we got a lot of options out here, man. Um, I mean, what the number one option is is definitely Airbnb. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Somebody that's not familiar with Air um, B and B Bed and Breakfast, uh, it's pretty much you know you go to another country and you can actually stay at somebody's private residence. Um, that you can look at the different profiles of the people that are, have properties to offer, and you can right. just kind of do it, see what they have to offer. Everybody doesn't offer the same things. It, yeah. it, to have something a little more um, intimate, kind of make you feel like you're, you're kind of like at home, 
away from home, I guess you right. could say. Mm -hmm. Some um, they actually have people that live at the residence. They might have their own section of the mm -hmm. property that they that they stay at, and they'll some people even cook for you. Like you're gonna have a complimentary breakfast. You might have somebody had a friend that went out mm -hmm. to Amsterdam and stayed at the Airbnb, and the lady would cook them breakfast, complimentary in the morning. You know, she didn't cook dinner. And she didn't do lunch, but she had at least did um, breakfast, which you know saves a lot of money. So um, also, yeah. Also, I want to I want to add in um, the Airbnb thing is tight because some of the places that you would uh, book, some hotels have uh, Airbnb bookings for the price that you want, because sometimes they'll have like a slow season or something like that, or they'll just have extra spaces, so they'll book. Um, you can book. Instead of renting a room in somebody's house, some of these places are like um, like a hotel or it'll be like a, a private suite or something like that. And it'll be pretty reasonable. It'll be cheaper than it would be in a hotel, but it'll still come with that Airbnb price. Also, another place I would say you can look for spots um, online is um, it's called Tripping, um, yes. Homeway, yes, um, and what is it, Windu? Windu, uh, Windu, W I N D U. Yes, that is correct. There's one called House Trip as well. House Trip, yes, I'm familiar with that one. Yeah, so, just type in bed and breakfast, man. Y'all can you you see a whole list of uh, websites. Do your cross referencing. Um, yes. Look at the uh, response. Look at the ratings for some of these sites. And oh yeah, yeah, man. That Airbnb is good for that too. Um, you people get to leave. Um, comments on, on the property how they felt about the property so it's it's it's, it's really good it's very informative you can know what properties to avoid right where got bad ratings and you can look at the properties that got good ratings oh yeah for sure so let me ask you mr murris so what would be some useful tips that you would give to our viewers right before we're leaving to go away somewhere because we have all of the information with the passport um booking your tickets booking your hotel stay how to save money so we have all these things together so what would be something or a few things that we could say we're gonna go away we have everything so now we need to push off well you need? thing man number one thing you're gonna need man you're gonna need your id you're gonna need your passport you're gonna need <laughs> relative documents, man. Right. And I can't really stress this enough. I, you know how many times I've been on trips with family members where they forget the, the ID at the house, running right. late at the airport, um, missing flights, having to pay additional fees. You do yeah. not want to take a flight. It's crazy, it's man. Biggest inconveniences you can have. Now, if they have delays, that's not on you. Right. But you, when you miss your flight due to your negligence, not bringing IDs and things of that nature, double checking before you leave, you know, you're going to only cause yourself a headache that doesn't need to be there, okay? Always have your IDs. Always have something where you keep your IDs in a safe place, man, because trust me, when you get to that ticketing window and you don't have an ID, right? It's, it's, can, it can ruin your trip before it starts, Okay. Another thing that I want to put out there, um, useful tips for like before you go on your trip, is right. when you're packing, right. a little ninja tip, roll your clothes instead of folding your clothes. Yep. Roll them up. Because trust me, when you roll your clothes up, you will be surprised at the type of space that you will have in your suitcase. And you can, right. can avoid some of these costly, um, overweight baggage fees yep. that they will oh, yeah. You do not want to go overweight on your trip, man, for two reasons. Number one, <laughs> if you if you leave overweight, typically you're gonna come back overweight. Okay? Right. Typically when you go somewhere, you're gonna wanna bring back things. So you don't wanna get hit with, you know, overweight fees for your baggage going and coming. And most airlines nowadays, they are now charging to, to check your bag in and, and things of that nature. So those things can, can really add up and really work against you. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, that and um, overpacking, definitely don't want to overpack. Also, um, you know, you want to, as you said, you want to get to your destination on time. Usually when you want to take a, um, 
an international flight, they want you to be there two hours ahead of time. So just keep that in mind. You always got to be there two hours ahead of time before you fly out. Yeah, domestic so, flights are typically an hour. Right. But international flights, due to the security, due to the, uh, the, the kind of uh, scrutiny you kind of go through. Right. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. they do random checks at the airport. They're very particular. Um, I don't know what it is about me. I think it's my first name is Islamic, but I get a lot of uh, random back searches. Okay, you know, um, I, got, I got like I got two uh, random searches in one trip. Right. So, um, sometimes you gotta be ready for that. Make sure you don't do a Jewel Santana. Please do not bring your weapon. Please do not bring your weapon to the airport, bro. Check your bags before you go to the airport, please. I know sometimes people are in a rush, but this is not the first person um, who has done something like that. I've heard of other people, you know, have their regular backpack or whatever with their um, concealed carry weapon in it and this have been in a rush, run to the airport, but don't check what's inside their bag. It happens, but just check your stuff before you do that, you know? You do not want problems with customs, bro. Let me tell you that right now. You don't want problems with customs. You don't want problems with CSA. Right. So you definitely don't want to do that. Definitely just want to make sure that um, you leave your weapon at home because you don't want to get your, your travel rights taken away from you, man. No, no. You definitely don't want that. Now, um, I just want to... I want us to go over some useful tips for when you actually arrive on your first trip abroad or you arrive in, you know, the next state or whatever. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Tips I want to put out there. I'm, I'm going to start with, um, you know, <clears throat> have a travel agent. If you have a travel agent, connect you with somebody local in the destination, at the destination that you're planning on going to. Um, like I said, travel agents are really good for that because they have people on the ground at the destinations that can get you shuttled from the airport to your hotel. Uh, they can mm -hmm. take you to events. They can put you on to what's going on locally. Uh, another thing you can definitely do is if you have a family member, let's say you uh, have a family member from the islands or you have a friend that has family from the islands, right. it's always connect with people that already have people on the ground that are locals. The local. and the reason why that's important, in my personal opinion, is when you do that, it gives you more of a local experience as opposed to the touristy destinations that uh, you're going to find uh, when you go on your first trip. When you hang out in the tourist-heavy areas, the tourist-heavy bars, you're going to spend a lot more money. Right. Um, you're going to save money if you can find somebody that's local, you know somebody that's on the ground, that's there already, that can show you around. They'll take you to the places that you pay nothing with a local shop and 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 they get heavy. You're gonna find that the difference in prices are pretty drastic. So oh yeah, for sure. Get that local experience. Find somebody local. Also, with that, the food as well too. You want to go to like the local food spots. You know, uh, the the quote unquote hole in the wall spots, because those are the um, spots where you can get reasonable food. But, right. um, and and get more of an abundance of what you would get in some of these um, touristy spots. Because I know sometimes the touristy spots, they may not want to put as much food on your plate and charge you more, but when you go to the local <laughs> spot, you go to the local spot, you get like food and drink and all of that good stuff for a reasonable price. So that's always like um, a good look, you know. How at the locals. It's too cool, B. Um, mm -hmm. I want to warn people, though, we, we want to put this out there because this is going to be your first trip. I would recommend I would I would recommend you not drink the local water. Right. That is something very important. Um, be mindful of if you have allergic um, allergies or you're allergic to certain type of foods. When you go into a, a, another country, they might not have the same regulations on things. They might put things that are not acceptable in the United States as far as in our foods. So you want to be very mindful of the things that you're eating, your mm -hmm. water, because a lot of times the water source is a little different. Right. Um, I've, I've done it before I went to England. I've drank the water source, um, um, water from their water for, uh, source, meaning tap water. Yeah. And I've broken out in hives and things like that because it's totally different. So I would recommend against drinking 
local tap water, um, even in some of the developed countries. It, it doesn't matter if it's a third world country. <coughs> some of the developed countries, uh, their water source is a lot different from what you're used to, and your body will tell you that this is, it's not agreeing with it. Right. Yeah, man. So pretty much we covered all of the bases and um, anything that we spoke about, we're gonna put it in the description within the YouTube video. And we're definitely gonna um, put as much information in there as possible so you can start looking and, and searching about where you want your first trip to be. Whether I'm, I'm, it's I'm gonna say, a local okay. thing. I'm gonna say this too. Uh, for all the people going out there on your first trip abroad or to another city, man, all I say is please go there with an open mind. Um, don't go into other countries down talking people. Don't make fun of people's cultures. Uh, don't get on people's food because I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an example. I, I remember this American couple I met. Uh, they went somewhere in the Caribbean, and I remember they were down there and they were ordering American food, and they were complaining about the way the people in this island cook the American food. But mm. to me, it doesn't make sense for you to travel to the Caribbean to eat American food, you know. Mm. Uh, onto a Caribbean island, you might want to try some cool Caribbean dishes right. and get a different experience. Try new things, okay? Don't be caught up in the things mm. that you do over here and bring it over there. That's okay? the purpose of travel. <laughs> right. It's your first time mm. traveling. Understand that you're freshmen, and some of the things you might see might shock you, but I'm just saying, just be humble, um, be open-minded, you know, be be willing to try new things. You're on vacation. You don't see this place every day. So, you know, take pictures, get souvenirs, get keychains, you know, get t-shirts, and make sure you have a great time, man. You know, freshman got to travel, man. That's what it's about, opening up that third eye. For real. Travel. Yeah. Experiences. Yeah. And it, it really helps out, man, especially when we have youngsters and you're traveling abroad, man. It, it really enhances them in, in, into their adult life. They can um, they can meet people from some of the countries they're visiting. And I can tell you from personal experience, people feel a lot more comfortable when they find out that you are familiar with the area that they come from. Trust okay. me, the conversation is totally different. Okay? So, man, you know, um, I want to wrap the show up, and I just want to thank everybody for tuning in, for supporting Sin Radio Cast. I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. And this is Sin Radio Cast signing off. Episode number three is in the books. We got a new episode coming up next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this show. And uh, we're going to put the email out there. If you have any show topics, again, email us at sinradiowave at gmail.com. Again, that's sin, S-I-N-W-A-V-E, sin, or well, sorry, S-I-N radio, W-A-V-E, <laughs> at gmail.com. Email us, hit us up, uh, like the Facebook, uh, like the Instagram, and mm. uh, follow us on Twitter, man. And that's all I got to say, man. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the love. We're going to keep the great topics coming. And signing out, peace out, Mr. Merce. Peace, man. Salute next week.